This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnston. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Episode number 141, baby. Oh yeah. And boy, oh boy, do we have something interesting today. I speak to Robert Martinez, who is a very, very well-respected teacher in the teaching English world, the TEFL world, as it's known. My manager actually recommended me to speak to Robert because of all of his knowledge and experience. So that is exactly what I do. Um, In the recording, you will hear that um, Robert has taught English in many different countries and has been teaching for more than 20 years. So, you know, he's got a little bit of experience. And in this episode, episode he shares all of his best tips with us so just think about that a teacher with all of that experience from all over the world sharing his best tips with you wow anyway i'm going to stop talking now and i will speak to you again at the end here is the conversation happy listening so hello robert and welcome to rock and roll english hello martin thank you very much for inviting me Absolutely no problem. It's a pleasure to have you. I've heard some wonderful things about you. I have heard you are the technology king of teaching English. Is this true? Oh, dear. I don't know. Those expectations are really high. I hope so. (laughs) Yeah. Sorry, I don't want to put too much pressure on you. Sorry about that. Um, But first of all, tell us something about you, Robert. Tell us where you're from, your experience. Okay. well, very briefly, um, I was born in Colombia, South America, and grew up in uh, the US and Florida and have lived uh, more than half my life abroad uh, in eight different countries. And I'm wow. particularly interested in teacher training and also in uh, implementation of technology in the classroom. Mm-hmm. And just out of interest, how many languages do you speak? Uh, five. <laughs> wow. And I'm learning Basque so, now. Okay, uh, so yeah, you definitely know something about teaching languages, okay? I I speak one other language um, and I don't even speak it that well <laughs> but uh, so you are definitely someone that can share a lot with us um so let me just so these things I, I cut out but I, I feel like we haven't spoken about you enough what mm. else could I say what else can I ask you um okay so where are you based at the moment um I moved to the north of Spain in uh August last year but I was in mm-hmm. Sicily in Italy in the south of Italy for about eight and a half years and before that wonderful place yeah Sicily. very nice <laughs> and before that I was in Singapore uh, oh, wow. as a teacher trainer with British Council uh before that I was mm-hmm. here in Spain again in Mallorca for two years with International House uh, before that, I was in the north of uh, Italy, in Turin, mm-hmm. uh, and then okay. basically, yes, uh, Egypt, uh, the UK, Canada, Vietnam, uh, and then I started in Colombia. Wow. Um, so, obviously, you've got lots of experience teaching people from different countries, mm-hmm. uh, but what have you seen is the sort of main thing, the main advice that you can give students that really helps them learn and things that have helped you as well, because you've mm. obviously learned many languages. Mm-hmm. So your best sort of language learning tips. Mm-hmm. That's a very interesting question. I think uh, you need to have passion for it and, and have Absolutely, a motivator. Yeah. You need a driver. Uh, so whether, whether it is intrinsic or extrinsic, you need something that is pushing you, especially at those times when you feel like, oh, I'm tired, I don't want to, or I can't do this any longer. So mm-hmm. um, my first tip would be if there's something that you're aiming for, whether it is a certificate to go and work somewhere or go to university or get a better job mm-hmm. you or because you love it, then you need to keep that in mind, especially at those times when you're feeling down. Sure. And what um, ways have you seen that you're able to motivate students or um, is it always up to them to find their motivation? Excellent question. No, I think it's it's the teacher. Uh, The teacher Mm -hmm. plays a very important role. And I think that it is if they can see that passion and that love you have for languages and also that you prepare, I think preparation is is key. You know, there there are lots of teachers out there that may feel that they can swing it because they've been teaching for so long. Uh, and I, I couldn't disagree more. I've been teaching for 24 years now and I still prepare my lessons very well, whether it is for students yeah, or for teachers. So I would say mm-hmm. um, adding variety, getting to know your students. I think empathy is 
is key. You need to know what makes them tick and then bring that okay. into the classroom through variety and showing, you know, things, doing things that they can relate to. Sure. Yeah. No, I really like the idea of um, variety. Absolutely. Um, any other tips for us? Because that's obviously a very interesting one. Any other um, pieces of advice you can give us? Uh, well, nowadays, you know, the technology is everywhere. Uh, and mm -hmm. so I would say that um, get in to know different tools, different websites, different applications, getting to know what they're using. Uh, most of our mm -hmm. students, I mean, um, I, you know, we tend to get lots of younger and younger students uh, learning English. Mm -hmm. So I would say get to see what they're using and what they're using it for, uh, because okay. and then try and speak that language. I think that is um, something that we can do to to get them more interested in actually learning the language through using those tools. Okay, so for example, many youngsters maybe, I don't really know what they use because I'm not so young anymore, mm. but I know YouTube, for example, that's a big one. Yeah. So to try and do things on YouTube and things like this. Yes, uh, especially, I mean, there's you can see it from two different points of view. You can call it Web 1.0 and Web 2.0. Uh, mm -hmm. 1.0 is more like you're receiving. So go and watch this video on YouTube and you're a passive mm -hmm. receiver. I think that's okay. But I think what really makes the difference is when the students, you are with the students and they are the ones making the videos, is, is okay, that process yeah. that, that changes. So they're not only consuming information, they're also producing it and sharing it. Um, and so mm. that, experien that experiential approach with hands-on is what very often makes a difference and they, you know, it helps their learning, their retention uh, better. Sure. I imagine as well, again, for motivation as well, because it gives them something to work towards. No? Absolutely. And um, I've read somewhere, I can't tell exactly where, but it says that research says that uh, students that know that they're preparing something for a different audience, they tend to put a bigger effort into things because they know that others are going to either listen or watch or read, uh, listen sure. to what they, they're producing or read or watch. So um, it, there's lots of benefits. Mm. Um, so that's great advice. So I imagine that's something you do with your students. Yes, is that right? yes that's right. Um, I try um, and, and, what... and help them use uh, tools as much as possible. With, um, you know, you need to take what I'm saying with a pinch of salt. It's not how many tools, because you can really, um, you know, I've seen some cases where the teachers are really enthusiastic about technology, but then they start using far too many tools and then the focus is more on the technology rather than on the students. Um, it's better sure. to focus on one app maybe that really use that you have used before that you see the students are familiar with or not that you see mm -hmm. it, it can enhance their learning in the classroom and then sure. focus on that for a period of time rather than throwing apps at them. I think that sure. that's really important. Sure. Um... But yeah, that's obviously great advice um, that people can follow when they're in a school and stuff. Mm. But unfortunately, obviously, many people can't afford um, language courses mm. and stuff like this and study alone, much like I did with Italian, mm -hmm. because I'm still poor now. I was poor then. I couldn't afford any courses, so I studied alone. Yeah. So what about those people then? So we're saying like create videos or something like this, oh. create something. What can they do then? Okay, well, um, one of the th reasons why I love the internet is because, uh, you know, I'm on in the same boat as you. Um, there are so many open resources, free resources available on the internet. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I absolutely love Future Learn. Uh, because mm -hmm. they are free courses, they're called MOOCs. MOOCs. Uh, okay, right. Uh, yeah. They're uh, module modular um, open oriented courses, so anyone can take them about anything that you want. There's also mm -hmm. um, there are also courses for English, and they're free. Uh, mm -hmm. All you need to do is create an account, do the course, and if you want, you can also purchase a certificate at the end for about thirty five pounds, I think it is. Um, but it's not so much the certificate, but the opportunity to learn about anything that you want. So, for example, sure. Future Learn, I would say to those people that don't have the resources, I do those courses all the time. 
I'm a, I'm a mm -hmm. mook addict, if you want to put it that way. Um, whenever I have free time, I'm always doing something on the internet. So you, there's future learn, there's edX, E-D-X also, there's, okay. there's uh, Coursera, um, and I would say they are the three main, um, there's also open learn, uh, th those are probably the main providers of free mm -hmm. courses. Okay, so you're saying basically to do a course, you can do an English course, I don't know about philosophy, for example, yeah. but because you're doing it in English, then you obviously get the opportunity then to listen to English. And I believe as well that you can do, um, you have to produce work. As that's well. right. Is that yes, right? that's right. Um, and this is where uh, the internal driver kicks in, because you, I mean, you can make an online course that is good, as good or as bad as you want, depending on how much mm -hmm. you engage with the material. Uh, for those courses, you have to watch videos or look or read articles, then they ask, give you a task, and mm -hmm. then you need to share it with other people doing the course. One of the disadvantages of, of MOOCs, I think, is that there's usually hundreds of people. Uh, however, yeah. in my experience, um, I've always had good interaction with with people on those courses uh, and i think is people who are serious about the course tend to levitate to towards one another um, mm -hmm. and part of the course is that you watch or read or uh, look at other people's work on the course and you comment uh, on them on their work okay. as part of the requirement so it's, it's actually quite interactive i mean you can also do the, just the course ignore the forums and finish the course but i think that would be boring and it wouldn't be as sure. engaging absolutely because you're missing the chance to um interact no that's absolutely brilliant yeah. um have you got any other resources that you could recommend to us uh well people without resources in the sense that they can really go and study at school i would say those would be probably the first uh, they would need mm -hmm. a b1 level of english an intermediate level of english to be able to cope sure. with the language i would say yeah yeah i think everyone listening to this podcast has a minimum b1 yeah. level so we're okay, oh, okay there we're okay good, good. <laughs> um applications i think there's tons of apps there's duolingo uh personally i'm for learning basque i'm using quizlet a lot on my phone okay so um i have lots of uh, quizlets that i have either looked up or created myself depending on what i'm studying um so sure. i would definitely recommend quizlet i would recommend kahoot uh, for the classroom uh, kahoot, yeah. um either a lot of people think that you can use kahoot only in the classroom and you can it's not true you can also use it online on your own uh you can okay, com right. compete against other people uh, somewhere okay. in the world um, you, you will have to show me how, how to do that after we finish speaking because I use that tool with my students. It's a dangerous tool to use, especially with um, students under the age of 18 because then every lesson after that they ask me, can we play Kahoot? Yeah, can we play yeah, Kahoot? Yeah. Can we play Kahoot? Yeah, it's very useful for uh, revision. Um, mm, I also yeah. use, for example, Google Forms to create self-grading with immediate formative feedback quizzes. And I okay. use them a lot. For example, I have, um, I just have had until just two weeks ago, a CPE class. And uh, okay. so that's the um, C2, C2 level. level. So Is it's right? quite yeah. challenging because you really, you know, there are people that already speak English almost like, um, well, they're pro they're almost yeah. proficient, right? Uh, so it's, it can be quite challenging finding the right materials, helping them learn all those very, very intricate words that the exam requires and the techniques and everything. Sure. So formative feedback, the kind of feedback that they uh, receive immediately and they can act on as soon as possible mm -hmm. as well, is, is yeah. you know, research shows that is is very useful and more effective than summative feedback, which is the one that you get when you do a test and then it's like, okay, well, got the score. You can do nothing about that after you get the score. Sure, sure. Yeah, feedback, I think, we're certainly moving up to the high levels is extremely important. Yes, no? absolutely, yes. And, um, you know, I've received very good feedback from students, uh, especially when I share those self-grading immediate feedback available quizzes. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of students, you know, I think one of the problems with the classroom is that very often if we do everything in paper, then we collect the, the writing and then we go and mark it and then we give it back and very often nothing mm -hmm. else happens out of that. 
with, for sure. example, uh, tools like Google Forms or Socrative is another app that you can create uh, your quizzes. You design them for that specific syllabus and then you can recycle them. So that's one advantage as well. Okay, yeah, uh, sure. Then uh, the thing is that they actually see it at the end, they can see the results and they can see the feedback. So you obviously you need to take time to um, provide feedback in advance, uh, in mm -hmm. advance for those questions that you put in the quiz. The advantage is that they don't have to wait uh, for a few days because sure. usually what happens is that when feedback comes back, it's, it's too late. I mean, they can't even remember what it was all about, right? Uh, so, exactly, yeah. yeah. So, um, one of the things that most of my students have said uh, is, it's good to be able to see right there and then wha where the problem was, because that okay. helps them actually think about it a little bit longer, rather than wait for a sure. few days and then come back and as you can't even remember why you wrote that. Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, Anyway, thanks for sharing all of this, Robert. Um, please tell us where we can find out more about you. Um, well, I have a YouTube channel for mainly okay. for teacher training, but it's available for mm -hmm. anyone who um, wants to look at uh, methodology, EFL, ESOL methodology in practice. Um, I also have a blog. It's not very active. I have, um, I think, about... 200 followers only it is very small okay and i've always considered it more as a repository of mm -hmm. uh my ideas and tools that i sure, see good idea, yeah. so it's, it's it's not the most popular blog <laughs> okay so well hopefully it will be a bit more popular <laughs> after this podcast i will include a link to it okay. in the show notes and it's called uh robert's learning together um and it was an, a project i started when i first did nine years ago the certificate in teaching languages with technology by the consultants okay. e um and i enjoy, totally enjoyed the uh the the activity um sure yep Okay, well, that's fantastic, Robert. As I said, all of these um, links that we've spoken about, all of the apps will be on the show notes. But thank you very much for taking the time to talk to thank us. Thank you so much for inviting me. And, um, you know, feel free to uh, get in touch at any time or any listeners as well. I'm always happy to share ideas or answer questions. Okay, thank you very much, Robert. We'll see you soon. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> no, thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Okay, so I'd just like to say thank you again um, to Robert for that. That was absolutely brilliant. So let's have a look at the main takeaways. Um, for me, one of them was how he mentioned variety. He was talking about it during lessons, but I think we can apply this to our general study, basically. Use variety in the things that you study. Don't just always maybe listen to podcasts. You can do other things. Maybe watch a TV series, read a book, do a language exchange, vary it. Remember, variety is the spice of life. Um, and I also thought it was very interesting how he says um, that motivation comes from the teacher. So if you haven't got a teacher, think about it. You don't need a teacher every day and spend lots and lots of money. Just someone that you can, you know, refer to every now and again. Just someone that will guide you and most of all to motivate you. Don't get the shit teachers that can't motivate you. That's a piece of advice as well. But the good teachers, the teachers that love what they do, will motivate you. Preparation is another one. Be prepared. I can't remember who said failing to prepare is preparing to fail. So when you have to do, I don't know, a presentation or even when you know you will be speaking English, think about it. Think about the things that you will say. Um, and another fantastic thing I thought was don't just consume information. You can produce it. And then he told us about all of the free courses, edX, Coursera, OpenLearn. So go and take a look at them because they give you the opportunity to actually consume and produce information. Another thing was feedback, how important feedback is, because that's the thing with languages. We can do all we want and start talking, but unless someone actually tells us and gives us some feedback, we don't know if what we're doing is correct. I always use the example of um, in Italian how for about five years I was making a mistake until one day Mrs. Rock and Roll English said to me, why do you always say that? You know, it's incorrect, right? And I was like, well, obviously not, because no one's ever told me. So once I got that feedback, I was able to stop that error. Anyway, thank you again to Robert and thank you to everyone for listening. I will see you all again on Monday. But in the meantime, just keep on rocking, baby.
Thanks so much for listening to Rock and Roll English. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit rockandrollenglish.com and facebook.com slash rockandrollenglish. We'll catch you next time.